Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Young men, young women and young men. People might think that I'm excluding others from this youth age. Young men and women are not an age. It is a spirit and vision and aim to keep working till you be able to develop, protect, save your society, community, and the country. So anyone at the age of 90 has this feeling, or age of 100 has this feeling, he is a young man and young woman, or she is a young woman. Okay? So when I say young men and women, it's not the age. It is the spirit that can drive you. A lot of aged people are younger than the less aged people who are the age of 20 and 30 and so on and so on. Today we are going to talk about a very difficult topic. Very difficult topic. Sent to me by somebody called uh, Brother Ahmed al Heat from Sudan. Who is working as the head of the training department and capacity building department of uh, direct aid in Sudan. This topic of relief of development or development of relief is very, very, very challenging, heartbreaking, because it deals with the people in disaster before, during, and after disaster. First of all, let us thank every one of my colleagues, Ahmed al Heit, Ahmed al Sheikh. Uh, Abdurrahman Nahas and Maher Is Sayyid. Beautiful. From Sudan to Syria to Turkey to UK. This is uh, uh, Brother Ahmed Al-Heet who is giving me a headache of giving me all these dynamic ideas to talk about today and he's training people in, uh, I think, in, in one of the countries. He had traveled to more than 15, 20 African countries uh, to do this training to the civil society organization there. What is this image? What is this image? A very nice, well-dressed, fat man, very skinny, poor, miserable looking, with bleeding from his feet and from his hand and chained with very old patched clothes and very frail young girl who was bleeding from both arms, crying and chained from the waist. What is this image for you? What is this image for me? This image for me, the first one, is the relief operation, which collect most of the money come to any humanitarian organization. The character number two in the middle, chained from the neck, is the development operation, which you find no people, nobody is interested to invest in it. The third one, which is the young girl, bleeding from both arms and chained from the waist, is the research and the advocacy operation, which have no fund, and she is going to die. Because we do not believe in advocacy, in development, in capacity building, in research. Okay. This is a donkey. Really? Yes, it's a donkey. Allah, Allah, really? This donkey, I got it for, uh, to draw this image from a verse in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioning it on the children of Israel, the Israelites. After Musa, peace be upon him, brought the Torah for them, they ignored it. And Allah mentioned them to be like this donkey who is carrying on his back a lot of box of knowledge. But he does not understand anything of it. So if I am the donkey... And I am the one who spend my money only on relief, I'll be like this donkey. I have to understand my wealth 
the value of my wealth to spend it accordingly to relief, to develop, and to research. You see, if this donkey is myself, I am crying because I am carrying this heavy load. My, my, my leg is broken here because it's very heavy. I don't understand what I'm carrying. And this is the problem with the mentality, the emotional mentality of the individual donors, such as myself. I'm not saying yourself because I'm comparing myself to the donkey. Yes, brothers and sisters, young men and women, don't be the donkey. I am the donkey. Let us go to the talk now. What do you mean by relief? Relief is a spontaneous response to emergencies following natural disasters or man-made disasters in armed conflict zone. This is relief. It's very simple. I'm not talking to be hypothetical to the people who are elite or people who are professional to hear and listen to what I'm talking about. This is number one. So what is the definition of development? Development is essential. For what? For stability as well as human and social development. The word development itself is the message and the vision of all the prophets and messengers of God who came to spread and establish justice on earth and build societies and save societies and save communities and save humanity. Development also can be comprehensive or partial but must be continuous. It can assume various forms leading to elevation, the outcome of development, elevation of the social status of the individual. Take him to a higher level of social welfare and development. It has to have a result at the end of the day. This will meet the individual needs of the people and individual social and economic and intellectual resources and is considered a human aim and objective. So, development is a long-term process, program, where relief could be shorter term. Time scale for relief operation depends on the disaster scale. It can range from months to years. The later, particularly cases of wars and armed conflict crisis. In armed conflict crisis, we have got something called protracted crisis, like in Syria now. There's still the relief operation going on for seven years. In Somalia, for 25 years. In Palestine, in Gaza, for about 30, 40 years. Because there's no stability. There's still some sort of conflict. Okay? While in cases of natural disasters, this period could be last for weeks or months followed by stages of rehabilitation, the construction, and the eventual development. If, uh, in a conflict zones, it can go to years, we we'll call it protracted crisis. In natural disaster, we can call it for weeks or months. While the period, I, would, I forgot to mention the, the period for the development. While, while, while the time scale for development could go for years, because it's based on program making. And each program is made out of projects and activities. Short term program, three years. Medium term program, five to seven years. Long term program, 10 to 15 years. Because you are changing the society, building the society, and saving the society. So this is the difference in time scale. What is the structure of relief operation or of the uh, development operation? Relief is a project or a, com or, a, or, or a, a few projects manifested by different activities. Such a project could be food and nutrition, shelter, clothing, water supplies, health and sanitation. This is a project. We will just fund for this. What the activity of such a project is the distribution and being with the people. Okay, this is how I can or how we can look at it this way. While development is a program, 
made out of different projects and manifested through various activities. For example, rural development program is made out of made up of different projects including education, health, water and sanitation, local market, agriculture, economy, recreation, employment as well as others. These are the projects within the rural development program. Okay, manifested by different activities during implementation. If you are going to talk about agriculture as a project, a part of the economy, okay, you want to distribute seeds. You want to distribute uh, tools. You want to make a workshop for the farmer to train them. You want to give cash to them. You want to buy animals to them. These are the activities within the agriculture stroke economical project in the program of rural development. You got it, brothers and sisters, young women and men, because the one who is 90 and 100 is for me is young man and woman. If we look at the financial support for both of them, is it easy to raise funds for him for development or it's easy for to, to for this one for relief relief in relief we can easily raise financial support for any disaster and sometimes can receive more funding than we need as what happened in tsunami 2004 okay when we look at it nowadays we have tsunami another tsunami smaller tsunami in indonesia a lot of money is coming to the organizations. The organization, because it's relief. Because we see the disaster. We see the destruction. We see the death. We smell the death. The, death of, the, the smell of death. So we pay more money. More, 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 more. So it's easy to raise the fund. When people die, injured, raped, become displaced, destitute, refugees. Or their houses have been destroyed, demolished, or their parents being killed and become orphans and widows. Okay. Development is next to impossible sometimes to convince the public to donate towards these kinds of projects or program or even support project activities. This has been particularly apparent in cases of advocacy, research, capacity building, networking, communication, conferencing, child protection, and safeguarding. Easy for the first, difficult, and near to impossible for the second. And this is the mentality. And this is the mindset. And this is the problem with us as donors. That's why when I go back to where I was before, and I compare myself to this, this is relief, this is development, this is research, and this is me. I am the one who does not understand the value of the world that I have. I'm only spending it on relief. I become like this donkey. Me, myself. I'm talking about me, not you. Me is the donkey. Clear? Clear? Clear. In spite of the fact, the donkey himself is the best animal to commit himself to his objectives. Does not change it. Negative impact of relief operation activities. What is the negative impact? What is the negative impact? At the time of disaster, you know what? Nobody should raise their, his, 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 his voice. Nobody should, should, should think properly. Fundraise, 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 fund, 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 fundraise. Okay? The philosophy of the era of disaster response is everyone is busy in humanitarian response and fundraising, which is not bad, it's good. All right? The reality of it is there is no time for. So 
everything and the reality of it philosophy is we have to be busy fundraising there's no problem second thing everything will become acceptable that's why our our standard will go down we have seen people employed by international organization in different african or asian countries at the time of disaster they know nothing absolute ignorance in them ignorant but they are speaking European languages, having European or American passport, regardless of their background. But we want to bring them there to fill the gap because we want to have the fund from the donor agencies who are asking us to get an expat to be in the field ASAP as soon as possible. That's why everything is acceptable. In reality, if we look at the negative of the uh, period, there is no time for monitoring, evaluation, efficiency, appropriate employment, reviewing organizations' values and humanitarian principles. This can lead to the creation of unhealthy humanitarian pockets, such as humanitarian business agents or brokers. Thank you, Ahmed Hit, for this new terminology. Second one is now we find ourselves in an urgent situation to lay down the rules. We have to lay down the rules of development response in order to build up preparedness process for all the field workers. Yeah, because during this, 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 during this period, we cannot do proper monitoring and evaluation and so on and so on. And so we have to, we have to have, have we have to lay down the rules of development response in order to build up the preparedness process for the all field workers. This is what we call selective preparedness of field workers to humanitarian response. Selective preparedness to humanitarian response. And the changing humanitarian reaction into humanitarian development. We have to change humanitarian reaction, spontaneous, into humanitarian development. What do we mean by developmental relief? Which is a discussion between me and Ahmed al -Hid. If we look first of all, it is the language and the culture of international donor who is dictating the process of development. We need to change such a language from the culture of the donor into the needy culture from the philosophy of thinking of the donor into the philosophy of thinking of the needy. From the drive of the donor into the drive of the community. This is what we need, which is a big, big challenge. Language and donor culture are the main drivers of the development program. Can we change such language and culture of development program into the language and the culture of the needy since what? They are the real owner of such funds. This is number one. What do we mean by developmental relief? Number two, to do that during the time of disasters and the humanitarian response. If we want to achieve the first point, we have to do that. What is that? Is to have few working groups during the time of disaster and the humanitarian response. What are these groups? First of all, humanitarian response group to raise the most urgent humanitarian needs and raise funds. Fine. I'm fine with this. Second one, coordination and advocacy working group to coordinate between us and our colleagues in the field. Third one is strategic planning working group to promote what's next policy. Fourth one, reconstruction and roadmap and development reconstruction roadmaps and development groups. See, these four groups has to be structured. See, in, in the Holy Quran, Allah said, out of every community, we have to get groups. Amongst them, specialized one to respond to the needs of the community. And what I'm saying here is what we are doing nowadays is nothing new, and Allah knew about it, and he guided all the prophets to deal with it. Look at, the, look at the strategy of Yusuf السلام, when he came to save Egypt from the famine in the first seven years with the seven fat cows. 
Okay? So when we look at this, during the disaster, we have to have to use these four groups. The maintain response group, okay? Coordination and advocacy group, strategic planning group, reconstruction roadmap, reconstruction roadmap, and development group. Four groups. More than that, what is the outcome of this? This will reinforce our agenda before any government because we put on the table for them. What we put on the table? Our agenda will be highlighted based on the needs, resources, and the ability of the local community. We should be driving it when we respond categorically in planning to create these four working groups. To show them the following, when the donor comes, by doing these four working groups, we'll show them our resources, we'll show them our plans for the community building and cohesion, we'll show them that the real gaps, real community gaps needed to be addressed. So when they come to us, we're already ready. Some of us doing advocacy, some of us is doing humanitarian response, some of us is road mapping, some of us looking at the future. So when anybody comes, we dictate our condition on to them. At this juncture, we can claim that we are addressing the sustainable development goals. Going back to the title, which you can, what do we mean by developmental relief? Okay. Once you address the developmental goals, community gaps are keys for community development. All of this will come to us. But our main challenge now, okay, young men and young women, what's our challenge now? How does humanitarian relief response become a professional, a profession and career? So when we, after creating these four groups, this will reinforce our agenda with the donors, this will lead us to start talking about sustainable development, but our challenges are how can we make humanitarian response a profession? A profession. How? First of all, skills training and development of material and field workers and volunteers. Second, research-based facts, figures, and analysis. Third, diagnostic findings based on real fact-finding figures. Four, Planning for short and long-term intervention program. Five, forecasting the, de de the developmental program that will take us out of humanitarian response into rehabilitation, reconstruction, and the eventual development. This is how, from this point, young men and young women, is the challenges will face us. How can we make it a profession? by skills training, research-based, diagnostic funding, planning, forecasting, and so on, so on, so on. Okay? What is the problem then? Now, you know the challenges, where is the problem? The problem in us as human beings are very emotional, whether we are Muslims or non-Muslims, whether we are Eastern, Western, Southern, or Northern. We are emotional people. Only give money when the disaster happens. Second one is from the people from the East. Sometimes they are confused between the activity and the project and the program. So when they go and visit the fields and distribute some aid material, they come back with this big who and love it. Telling myself and yourself, young men and young women, it's not about distribution. It's about community building. It's about advocacy. It's about research. It's about complementarity. It's about partnership, it's about empowerment, it's about ownership, not just about the food. Because we want any individual in the society to be able, or every individual in the society to be able to be a part of building their own community. Okay, this is the problem we are facing. The third problem is the lack of understanding of the value of development. All of us whether from the east or west or north or now south. We only give most of our money to the, to the relief, not to the development. We don't understand what development means. So solution, 
What is the solution then? The solution, first of all, raising social awareness of citizens and differentiation between activities, projects, program, relief, and development. Number two, making volunteering and volunteerism subject of the educational curriculum taught in the schools and universities. Number three, making volunteering and volunteerism social service programs for all civil servants and the criteria for promotion in governmental and non-governmental institutions. Number four, four, taking part, part of the fund, part of the emergency relief fund and spending it on development. This could be up to 25 to 30%. And 75 to 75% should be spent on relief. Keeping this, some of this fund, till we actually, the peace happen in the conflict zones and we spend it. This 25 to 30% at the time of the emergency would take it to do what was it? To do selective relief and rehabilitation and development programs, such as capacity building, community organization building, community building, building municipality during the disaster and during the conflict, uh, uh, even making some developmental and rehabilitation program out of the area of conflict zones. We have to do it. We have to do it. We have to do it. Because once the camera is away from the disaster stricken or the conflict zone area, no fund will be coming to such organizations. We will have to get fatwa to support what we talk about. Even to keep some part of this fund into a strategic fund. When the war is over, we spend it. This is what we need to change the mindset of the donor, whether this donor is an individual, whether this donor is a government, whether this donor is an international institution as well. Last one, elevating the awareness of religious scholars to enable them to produce community fatwa, community building, community building fatwa, community building opinion through the discretion of explaining and extracting new opinions from the holy religious texts. How? By explaining and clarifying the dimensions of social problems, not only through theoretical exam explanation, but through organizing field visits to conflict zones and developmental projects. This will have to take with us all those clergymen, Muslim, Christian, Jews, uh, Sikh, Buddhist, so on, so on, so on, so on, because of their weight in the community. After this, we we'll go back to Ahmad al-Hayt and his almost difficult question to me, it made me to sweat, and not to sleep till, to, till, to, to answer these questions. What was the question? From really, uh, is the, uh, uh, the, the name of the title is uh, develop. Uh, I forgot the. Development of relief or relief for development. Go back to his, the answer of this question at the end and be realistic and saying, okay, the answer is development is dying. Is dying, whether we like it or not. And needs emergency response project and program to save and revive it for the people who are donating their money. Relief and emergency response needs intellectual, thought-provoking investment project to develop it, okay? This process will produce scientists, thinkers, religious scholars, theologians, community leaders, professional, manual skilled workers, politicians, market economy experts, farmers, and so on, so on, so on. The caliber of these individuals will enable them to deal with emergency relief and development on equal footage. This is to answer the question of Ahmed Hita again. 
First of all, development, everybody, young woman and men, development is dying, needs a humanitarian response. Help us, help us, help us to keep it surviving, to keep it surviving, development, advocacy, research. For the relief and the emergency, because it's full of fund, okay, it needs what? It needs intellectual thought provoking investment projects to do what? To develop relief and emergency. Okay. This process, once we develop relief and emergency, intellectually, uh, will produce whom we think in the community. Scientists, thinkers, leaders, scholars, theologians, community leaders, professionals, manual skilled workers, politicians, market economy experts, farmers, and so on, and so on, and so on, and so on, and so on. So. So we have to look at both of them on equal footage. We make the humanitarian response to develop the country and start the development program. Last proverb, which was in Arabic and translated from Ahmad al-Hit into English, development is the emergency of relief response of the future. And the emergency is the relief response of the present time. Shall I say it again? Development is the emergency relief response of the future. If the development is the emergency relief response for the future. If we develop the country through the development program, we'll be able to respond locally to the emergency situation in the country. While emergency relief is the relief response of the present time. These are the two images. I will stand here because this looks like me or I look like him because I don't value what I have of resources to spend on the community. While the reality here, community only may, may donate most of the time or most of the time at the time of the emergency and fail to respond to development and fail badly to respond to research and advocacy and capacity building and community building. This is the reality in East and West and North and South, Muslim and Muslim. If we keep doing this, we'll be working against the teaching of all the prophets and messengers of God who came as social workers to save humanity through building community, through empowering of people, through building ownership of community to the, to the individual and the citizen. What we are doing, we make what you call it, fire, or become firefighting. My advice to young women and men, it's not about going and taking some photographs. It's not about going before others. It's not about saying that I am the best and they are not the best. This is all fake and false and wrong. It's about how each and every one of us will be able to enable the local community to lead such a local community to be able to stand on its feet, to build its community, to protect itself, and develop its future. May Allah bless you. Inshallah. Jazakumullah khair. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. See you next week.